A big part of what we hope to accomplish on this show is to help you understand each athlete's persona. When many people watch races, they see a bunch of skinny people lined up who look very much the same. Our goal is to dimensionalize races and show you that each athlete is unique, like a craft beer or voodoo donut, driving towards the finish line with all their talents, baggage, hops, and sprinkles. So without further ado, uh, you know him from such hits as the 2016 Olympic trials where he placed fourth in the 800 and fifth in the 1500, most recently seventh in the world in the indoor 1500 for the USA and Nike Organ Project the pride of Fafftown, North Carolina, Oxford, Mississippi, and now Portland, Oregon. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Craig Angles. How are you, sir? It's good to see you. Take a seat. Let's see what we have here. Let's see, Craig, 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 Craig. There he is, Craig Angles. All right, Craig. How are you? Pretty good, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's, the pleasure is all ours. Yeah. What have you been up to? Um, we took a couple weeks off. Um, I took a road trip to Las Vegas with my girlfriend. Uh, stopped by Crater Lake on the way, and it was, it was like a really good time. But then I had to get back to training and got into it really quick. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Crater Lake to Vegas, uh, which was. I mean, those are two very different destinations. Uh, which one do you prefer? I don't know. On, on like one end, you have like the most beautiful nature in the world. Yeah, Vegas. Have, Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the most unnatural thing in the world, Crater Lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that that deep of a hole in the ground yeah. can't be natural. <laughs> those skyscrapers in Vegas. Those are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, those are beautiful things. Yeah, you can never hit rock bottom in, uh, in Vegas, but you can in Crater Lake, no, that's for sure. You can hit rock bottom in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it didn't happen though, all right. Not with a fur coat like that. Yeah. Came out on top. Yeah. yeah, tell us about this. What's this all about? We won enough money in Vegas to buy a $50 jacket from Goodwill. Pretty crazy, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's on the top shelf of Goodwill there. Yeah, actually it wasn't Goodwill, it was a garage sale. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I first moved to Portland, I was lonely and the weather was gloom, so I went to a garage sale and found it there. So. As you do. Yeah. I don't know where else you'd find this jacket. <laughs> no, that, that's a nice come up, though. That's what they call the thrift, sh or thrift shop yeah, finds, right? More. Yeah. Right yeah, good, good come up. <laughs> All right, let's get down into some Angles history here. So uh, you grew up in Fafftown, North Carolina. Am I saying that right? There's a... No, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, you've got like three F's in there and yeah. a P, so I don't know. It's, it's Poff Town. Poff Town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> nice. So that first F is silent. P. Poff. Poff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What was life like in in Poff Town, North Carolina, for young Craig? Yeah, um, not much went on there. Um, we had a post office. That was cool. Um, you have a pen pal? <laughs> no, no, no pen pals. <laughs> Um, so it was useless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, thankfully we were close to a city like 30 minutes away, so. Oh, oh good. Yeah, but Town was pr pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in Town, you got into track, of course. Yeah. Uh, how did that happen? Um, actually, pretty crazy story. I, I played soccer growing up my whole life, 14 mm -hmm. years, I think, and um, my sophomore year, I got kicked off the soccer team for pulling someone's pants down. So. I mean, did you see that? Did you see that Ronaldo <laughs> goal the other day? Uh, oh, it was big time. And then he like took his shirt off and he pulled his pants down a little bit too. But I don't think they're yeah, kicking him off the team. I, yeah, I did not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's was, it was pretty bad. But then I was like, oh, I can't go home and tell my parents that I got kicked off. So I'll just join the track team so that I have something to do after school. Oh, so this was like, no, mom and dad, this, I wanted to join the track team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And there you can wear pretty short shorts, too, so <laughs> that's not a big deal with the pants situation. Nice. Well, yeah, you, I mean, when we were talking over some great fried chicken the other night, uh, you said that uh, track uh, was not your, your first love. Well, it, of course, it was soccer. But you had a few other things that you'd, you, you would do as well. Uh, one of them was golf, I think, and another one was being a NASCAR driver. Oof, that'd be nice. So, yeah, what... Uh, what about those two sports, or do we call them sports? Is that that's that's why I like them. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> um, 
earlier you asked Carrie like what she would tell her younger self and what I would tell my younger self is not to run. It's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally too hard is one of the hardest. Parts. I think we could trace this all the way back to your pants situation <laughs> here. So look what you roped yourself into. And I'm like, NASCAR would be so much easier. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to wear pants in there, I don't think. <laughs> like, oh, I have to go drive 500 miles today? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just listen to a podcast or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Golf, like someone's carrying my bag for me. Like, I don't know. It's it's nice. Easy. <laughs> you just have to. I chose the wrong sport. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say you you didn't. You're doing pretty well. Uh, seventh in the world indoors this last uh, March. It was yeah, in correct. March, right? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. It's April now. We're rolling right along. This year's crazy. Um, <laughs> God, what a time it's been, right? <laughs> uh, so let's see. In, in any of those sports, what would your dream scenario be and how would you celebrate it here? Put yourself in there. Jeez. Um, yeah, I think we talked about this one and uh, I think it would have to be NASCAR, like winning yeah. NASCAR and then just having like all those champagne bottles and everyone cheering for you after you just drove 500 miles and yeah. didn't do anything for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so happy to see a person getting out of the yeah. car, right? <laughs> It's like getting in grandma's house for the holidays and everybody comes running out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Craig, we're so happy to we're see you. <laughs> grandma. That's what my Thanksgiving was like. But now now that I run, I would love to see that scenario at the end of a race. Like everyone's popping bottles everywhere. Yeah. Or putting a green jacket on me, you know, or cheetah jacket or something. Yeah, you don't want a green jacket. No. You're doing pretty well here. <laughs> and you said that you uh you're kind of vying for maybe a bush light sponsorship, is that yeah, I'm not dream. exclusive. I would go with Budweiser, um, Bush Light, Bush Ice, you know, any of the guys, yeah. Yeah, none of the Natty Light, yeah. the craft beers, though, like you go for the um, no, I think tried and true. For me, I <laughs> not your style. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, well, you're pretty new to the area here in Portland. Yeah. Uh, before you were here, you were uh, at Ole Miss, uh, and you had a, you got a smile on your face when I said Ole Miss. Are you missing it? Yeah, I do miss it, and this old miss. Yeah, Oxford, good to you. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, I, I mean, I went in with no expectations coming from North Carolina, and I just like pictured farmland, but it was actually beautiful, and it was a cool college town. Like, I loved it. Nice. So, what brought you to Oxford initially? Um, my high school coach, who's the reason I'm still running today, is uh, he is best friends with the college coach there. So, by term, we just like. Uh, switched phone numbers and I was about to quit running at my old college, transferred in and worked out from there. So it's a pretty crazy story, but. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and then how did you get up to speed there? Because you were a great high school miler too, 403, is that right? In Correct. high school? Yeah, good stats. Yeah. yeah, I got it up here. <laughs> it's all hidden. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, 403 in the, in the mile. And all right, you've got a you've got a tattoo too that relates to your. Oh, no, don't bring it up. Come on, man. You showed it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that thing? Right here. What? Yeah. So, so you got a tattoo on your finger. What? Like what? Well, first, what does it say? The tattoo says "Yeet," which no one here will understand. Well, that's why we want to which talk I don't about really it. Understand anyway, but. Yeah. Well, let's do our best to dig into this yeah. then. Like, what is this tattoo all about? Um, we. Yes, she used to say yeet when we were really excited at Ole Miss. Like, me and the coach, like, if we had a good workout, we'd be like, yeet. Like, yeet. Hey, let her rip a little right, bit. Right, like that. Yeah. Like, well, no, I mean, like, give it a good one. Oh, okay, yeah. We oh. could do it together. <laughs> okay. like, yeah, we'd be like, yeet. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing it right? Yeah, you got it. Yeet. Got, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> um, and from there, it just turned, uh, spiraled down south. And then um, I was actually at Wake Forest University in my hometown. Mm-hmm. Uh, running on campus and one of the freshmen there was like, hey man, you want a tattoo? And I was like, yeah, sure. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a, a freshman? At... But I didn't know him. Like, we just met that day. I was like, yeah, I'll take a tattoo. So did he do the tattoo or did you go to a parlor and get yeah, it done? He did it. Oh, really? Stick and poke. <laughs> if you could see it up close. <laughs> oh, man. He is a little off. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it looks good. You're yeah, fine. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so it was uh, the night before was his first tattoo ever. He gave it to himself on his thigh. 
Okay. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, you that too and <laughs> All right, yeah. I mean, you do it first. I guess he he's tried and true after that, so yeah. you had nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah, you're a very trusting individual then. I guess so, yeah. Nice. That's one of your one of your great qualities. Another one, this is a good segue, I guess. Another one of your great qualities is your ability to relax, which is something that uh I've honed in on watching you, and uh, you're a bit different from a lot of runners out there who are, who are pretty neurotic about their warm-up, and um, they have all these like routines that they do and that kind of thing, and yeah. you just kind of go out there and do your thing. Like, uh, where, does, where does that come from? Yeah, I, um, I actually think it like, scares runners a little bit when people are that relaxed in the call room. Like, most people have like, all their rituals, they have to be like, warmed up by this time and all these things and like then they see a guy coming in laughing and they're like what did I miss <laughs> why am I so nervous and then like then it gets in their head and it's a little bit of my plan so this is calculated <laughs> relaxation a little bit yeah and then also it's just like I don't know I, I like to have fun with it yeah I'm not gonna go in there and just like treat it as if it's like life or death it's, it's we're, we're there to have fun so absolutely yeah. that's awesome that's a really good outlook yeah. I mean, when I saw you watch at UW actually um, this past January, I believe January or February, when you ran a 3K, and uh, yeah, everybody's on the line, like doing their their pre-race routines and stuff. They're all shaking out, and uh, you're there on the sideline or right at the end of the line next to the wall, and you're just laughing, and you've got your hand on the fire alarm, and you're looking at the starter, and he's shaking his head like, "Don't do it," and you're like, "I'm gonna do it." <laughs> So you're just, you're totally relaxed out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I wanted to do that 3K, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, this is my way out. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but you ended up winning that 3K. Yeah, that yeah a, me and the guy got either second or third. Well, the guy that got second and third were staying with me that whole week leading up, so we had like a few side bets, which drove me to win that one, but. <laughs> okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, that was a pretty great performance. Mm -hmm. I was happy to be there to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Hey, yeah, always. I'll be there for you. Uh, yeah, I like your response to uh, uh, what kind of car. We send these questions out to, to, uh, to Craig beforehand uh, to figure out a little about him. But um, yeah, I like your response to what kind of car would you be uh, and how would that reflect your racing? And your response was an RV. And why is that? Always ready to go. <laughs> Always packed up and ready to go, huh? <laughs> that was a fantastic response. <laughs> okay, so coming out, like, obviously, um, you were packed up and ready to go after college, and you came out here, and you joined the Oregon Project. Mm -hmm. um, how did that transpire, and how are you um, working into that new routine? Yeah, um, I had no clue what I wanted to do. I just... I finished NCAAs and got third, and I figured there was no way I was going to get a contract because I didn't know how anything worked. The, the NCAA does that to you where they'll like make sure you don't know what's happening post collegiate. You know, <laughs> you can't talk to you, you can't like do anything. It's or it's a violation. Yeah. So I had no clue, and um, right after that, I was like, everything came so quickly. They were like, hey, you need to sign with an agent. Um, Nike talking to you. Like Brooks is looking at you. All these different companies, and then. All of a sudden, someone I got like the phone call. It's like, "Hey, Oregon Project wants you," and like that's when I was like, "Okay." They have every single like technology. They have everything available, all of, like massage therapists, lifting, everything. So I was like, "Well, I'll give it a try." I've heard all the rumors and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone has. I'm not gonna like sit there and pretend there's no rumors, but okay. so I was like, "Oh, I want to see him for myself." And since I've joined. I kind of wish that the rumors were true because I'm struggling training. <laughs> like I need something. <laughs> the, the, the so training's hard. This, this goes all the way back to your pants situation that got you into this. Yeah, yeah this is your own doing. You should never have pulled your pants down at soccer practice and no, you wouldn't be nice here. Car. <laughs> yeah, you'd be driving a car somewhere right yeah. now. <laughs> but I could safely say that we. There's nothing going on there because they won't even let me take beet juice before races just because someone may see me drinking it and be like, oh, no, no. Well, I heard so, that can get pretty like, messy, gosh, too. I just need something. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Well, what do you do in your downtime then to um, 
recuperate from, from that hard work? Um, geez, I don't even know. When people ask me like, where my time goes, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I'll go home and like, well, <laughs> I bought a 1971 El Camino that I thought I would work on every day and like make it sweet. Yeah. But as soon as it started raining in Portland, I just did not want to be on the ground working on it. You get a little muddy. Just, I don't know what I do. I think I just sit inside and sometimes we go on trips in Portland. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm excited for training camps, though. Those are really fun. Yeah, you're going down to... Uh... Flagstaff on Sunday. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the name of that place. Cool. You pumped for that? Going up, actually. Oh, going up, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, get to train with Eric Jenkins, Matthew Sinchowitz, so that'll be like the best training partners possible. Two heavy hitters. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to find something, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as long as I've known you, uh, you've been a bargain shopper. So. Uh, we know each other for a week. <laughs> right. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But what? So. It's, it feels like it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got deep. <laughs> yeah, we did. We got to know each other. Uh, so what's your most prized bargain at the moment? Like, what are you really excited about that you just came up on? <laughs> um, I actually, when I first moved to Portland, I was out at another garage sale, and I found this painting. It was like an oil painting. And uh, the little signature said, like, Crespi or Crispy or something. It was the artist's name. So I Googled it, and it was, like, from... 1792. I'm like, oh, I gotta buy this. <laughs> oh. It's like 90 bucks or something. It's a massive painting. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, this would be worth a million dollars. And you know, <laughs> like those shows. In like a thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got home and like had just completely misread. It was like 1992. <laughs> 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 I was like, dang it, I just wasted 90 bucks. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I'm like, pretty sure it's like a replication as well. <laughs> So that's not your best bargain so now right I now, yeah. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just, I like I like buying cars and then selling them. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so is there a, is there a certain thrill that comes with uh, finding a bargain, that, for you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what is it? Is, does it compare to anything? Like winning a race. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. <That's crazy. laughs> when you're like. That cheese is like half off over there. <laughs> like that's, yeah. like what like what race would that equate to? Do you think? Olympic trials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So you're just on a high oh. most days then. Huh? <laughs> There's no bringing you down. <laughs> good for you, Craig. We need to go shopping together more. Yeah. I'll get you some good deals. <laughs> nice. All right. Another. Uh, another topic here that you're famous for, um, and this is kind of uh, this is something that I came across on social media. Um, Matt Centrowitz had had this in his story, and uh, I was scrolling through, and I saw that you were uh, driving a Ford Aerostar down the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your hair was just blowing in the wind and stuff. Um, so I found out that you've got kind of an affinity for the minivan. It's yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's it's, get into it's this. It's a home on wheels, you, <laughs> packed up, ready to go whenever. I agree with you. Like, how how did this passionate love affair with the the minivan begin? Um, let's see. It was my second, so my junior year at Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. Right after Instant Blaze, I bought a minivan in Eugene, Oregon. Uh huh. I uh, like Uber to this guy's house and just paid seven hundred fifty cash and. Drove back to the hotel and the whole Ole Miss staff was standing there like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Did you steal this car? I'm like, no, no. Hell up the title. <laughs> I got it. Still, they're still just as confused. <laughs> they're like, then they're just like, whatever. Because <laughs> um, I was coming back two weeks later for the Olympic trials mm -hmm. in Eugene as well. So um, I actually left the, the van with a teammate who had just graduated. He drove it around the whole two weeks and I flew back in and um, when the Olympic trials were done, me, two buddies and my ex-girlfriend took the van down to Mississippi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Drove the $750 van and along the way we had a blown radiator, uh, rode across the, the Golden Gate Bridge with the doors open. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was pretty fun, but when I got back to Ole Miss, I sold it for 1200 bucks. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hope they're not watching right now. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. person who bought it. <laughs> no, they'll be trying to land the Not yet, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're uh, we're getting there a little bit. 
uh, Ole Miss, uh, you obviously had a great year in 2016, because that's where you were fourth in, uh, in the 800, then fifth in the 1500, and you were the, the talk of the town, because you walked out on the track with your mullet and your mustache, and it's like, who's this guy just silky smooth sliding around the track looking like a NASCAR driver or something? <laughs> Good old days, man. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Like, what about Ole Miss um, got you to that point to be able to do those things? Um, I, I think we just took a hashtag too far. We, uh, we used to hashtag on all of our photos, get that contract. Uh -huh. Hashtag get that contract because we were all trying to get contracts out of college. Uh -huh. And we would all just, like, do something weirder and then post a photo of it, and it just got to an extreme, and then it worked out because... A stupid haircut and mustache got me a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely did. Well, and your and your abilities. Uh, all right. Well, now uh, because you are so famous for your appearance uh, <laughs> with your mullet and your facial hair, uh, as seen in this picture, we're going to play a little game. Okay. So, because Craig, we know you have wonderful hair and physique, and Jeff is Jeff. We're going to go ahead and give you a task. You, we're going to give you, uh, let's say, 90 seconds to create whatever you would like out of these two wigs. 90 seconds is a lot of time. Oh, yeah. Do we have scissors? So that's, <laughs> that brings me to the next bit. I'm going to give you each a comb and a pair of scissors. Fine. you got 90 seconds. And you got to make these hairs, hair look as whatever you'd like, OK? I can't remember the last time I've held a comb. Oh, man. <laughs> well, then, you got your, you got your shaper. Your hair, your hair putty stuff, you got plenty of ties and whatnot. Okay. And you got things that bend and look shiny. So yeah, I think we need to get ready here. You guys ready? Set, go. Yeah. Let's cut this thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this was like, did you put this thing in the oven or something? You just wasted your time. I don't even oh, know man, how this dead. is supposed to look. Look at Craig going right into it. He knows what he's doing over here. He's Craig. clearly a pro. Jeff, you gotta pick it up, man. You're not a man for the bangs, are you? This is some fine hair. Uh, 20 wanna, seconds down, guys. I kind of think she looks good already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what do you do? I'm kind of lost. Just struggling hard to make decisions right now. I Craig might just is just it. going head first into this. I think there's something. Oh, not... Jeff with the, the, the single finger approach. I'm just very, going like. Very delicate, very delicate. I know with my hair in particular. 40 seconds in now there, Jeff. You with, might want to make some moves. <laughs> well, with my hair in particular, it gets real frizzy at the top, so I want to help her out. But. <laughs> With this thing. Bold choice. Bold choice. What are you doing? Oh, oh Craig, come on. 50 seconds. You got to get guys. working too. I was going to go with the bowl cut. I was just going to. I don't want to touch this back part. I don't know. Is this layered already? Is that, is that what Jeff, that is? Just done zero work. It seems a lot longer on this side <laughs> than that Craig side. Craig making some good hard effort over here. I'm just going to cut this back one. I need to like get some leverage here. Oh, hey, yeah, hold that down. Does this count as team? Like a. Am I going to get disqualified? We might push this to two minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think we need some extra time. You, you gave us dull scissors, bro. <laughs> this oh, isn't working out. Only yours. <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> oh. Pierre getting a really good look at Mako, or Monica's struggling here. I'm going to cut about, my fingers. You're not getting any tip on this haircut. That's good with the scrunchy. I smell your axe hair gel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I might need to use that. Look at her. She's just got hair in her eyes. Look at her. She can't even see anything, huh? Is that better? <laughs> oh my goodness. Here, we gotta need a clip or something. This is what it's like to have a daughter, huh? <laughs> Give her some layers over here. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Craig going with the, the comb and cut. That's a good classic barber. Oh, it snaps barber that way. Move. Scissors are not too hot here. Oh, your scissors too, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Do, you, do people do like a double scrunchie? Is that a thing? <laughs> I've heard of that being a thing, yes. Yeah, any, any girl who is getting dressed up for a night out at the club, just know that this is like, mm. I don't even know what you do. Jeez. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you guys 30 more seconds. So you could do that, and, and I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> Jeff, I'm bold moves here. I'm just trying to get the hair out of her eyes. Is it is the time up yet? Fifteen. Ah, crap. All right. Ooh, final ten. Let's get these guys oh, in the back. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you down here. Maybe Can't we just keep need a professional to face on right now. 
We'll get that on there. And three. Let's just go with two, what we know. One. <laughs> All right. Let's give it up for our, our competitors. You know, okay. Okay. Hey, okay. yours looks nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I would date her. <laughs> All right, let's um, okay. Well, let's let's let the audience decide on this one, okay, guys? Because um, I think clearly we got two good-looking Monica and Pierre's. So, guys, let's let's by a round of applause. How much like Monica? <laughs> and Pierre? Yeah! Oh, come on! Yeah, I think we got a clear winner here. I think that's gonna be Craig. Craig Engels, thanks so much for coming on our show. Yeah, you can take you any guys. of these hair products home with you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Engels. Craig Engels. I got a sticky hand right now. Put her there. <laughs> all right, everybody. So that's our show for tonight. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you to Downstream for hosting. Thank you to Stormbreaker, thank you to Great Notion, thank you to Bridgeport, also thank you to Voodoo Donuts for bringing the donuts for everybody. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been with us from the beginning, because it's been a long, long time now. This is our second episode. Uh, but we hope to see you all for the next one, and uh, we'll be right back here. Remember, if you've got nowhere to run now, baby, Track Landy is alive and well, so come on out. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. Good job,